Yellow. You have another story for me? Okay, I'll be there. You know, the more time one spends here in Southeast Asia, the more my perspective changes on the people of the region and their day-to-day -day living. Also here within Thailand alone, it's known all around the world as an awesome tourism destination where the very few visitors leave, not having chowed down on a lot of the popular seafood dishes. Throughout the amazing kingdom of Thailand, you can see all these crazy critters and all these unusual seafoods that you see traded and markets just like this. Um, but out of everything, there's one particular fish that you see everywhere. Whether it be alongside the fried crickets and grasshoppers, throughout the local fresh food markets, being carted around by busy street vendors, to local eat outs, and even upmarket fancy restaurants. It is this little critter here, the short mackerel, or blatu, as the locals call it, which most Thais know as the country's most iconic national fish. While tourists enjoy their fresh oysters and prawns with a nice cold beer, for the people of Southeast Asia, seafood is a critical source of protein with a wide range of nutritional benefits. For the hundreds of millions of people living on the coast, many protein sources found in the developed countries like America, Europe and Australia are not easily found here. I've learned that the cultures and the religions of each country also don't allow the consumption of one protein source or another, whether it be among Muslim communities or countries where Buddhism is followed by most. For nearly all the people of Southeast Asia, fish is the common protein source linked very closely to the country's long histories and cultures. I'm amazed by this short mackerel. Everyone here says it is one of the most delicious and nutritious foods available. Jam-packed full of protein, calcium in the edible bones, and uh, oils like omega-3 which are ultimately help growing babies' development. It is eaten by so many people here, and it's the often go-to meal for babies and the sick and elderly. Also, because of its unique delicious taste, it has made it perhaps one of the most iconic seafood products within Thailand. And just like how one Thai word could sound the same but mean so many different things, the fish is used to make a huge variety of dishes with a massive variety of different tastes that will often bring families and communities together. But because the short mackerel is so loved, it has now been recognised that it's threatened by overfishing. It has a huge daily market and the Thai government has been working hard for the past 50 years with scientific studies and working with fishing communities to try and ensure long-term sustainability with this particular species to make sure there's enough blah tool to meet the demand. And it's not only loved in Thailand, people neighboring the countries like Cambodia, Myanmar, Vietnam, they all love it too. And because the demand is so high, there are often many different sea vessels from different countries, all in the South China Sea and the Gulf of Thailand, chasing after it. Also, another issue is because of the monsoon season shifts in the sea, often different countries' sea vessels are crossing over illegally into everyone's territory. This actually happens quite a lot in the bordering areas in the South China Sea, which highlights the fact that all the regions need to work together to help sustain this uh, particular species that everyone loves to share. From observing all the hard labour at the fish landing sites, there's talk around the fishing community that the short mackerel is getting harder to find and they seem to be getting smaller every year. The fishing communities are starting to worry about the future of their income and securing a long-term supply of food from these stocks. Also, among the fisher folk, it seems many of them don't even look Thai. I've learned that many of the crew come from neighbouring countries like Cambodia and Myanmar, which are two countries considered among the world's least developed countries. They are migrant workers sending most of their meagre earnings back to their families in often poor and disadvantaged villages. So this just goes to show that the seafood industry is more than just a supply of fish. 
This massively contributes to millions of families involved in the fishing sector. To the fishermen who head out to sea every day risking their lives, to the wives that sell this fish in the market, to even people that are turning this fish into amazing dishes that are consumed everywhere throughout the whole region. Man, honestly, the more I learn about the people here in Southeast Asia, conversations about the sea between tourists and the locals are worlds apart. When tourists look at the water, we think, what a wonderful day to go surfing, scuba diving, enjoying a nice cocktail by the water. To the locals, when they look at the sea, they think, I hope I catch enough feed for my family today. I hope the monsoon doesn't affect my income this month. When the locals look at the sea, it's not for fun activities, it's for survival. Importantly, the Global Environment Facility, United Nations Environment, SeafDeck and the governments and communities bordering the South China Sea have all joined forces to make short mackerel stocks more resilient to the effects of high and increasing levels of demand for the fish. This is all being done through the South China Sea Fisheries Refugia Initiative, which is putting in place arrangements for the effective management of threats to a number of fish species, including the short mackerel. At Priority Fisheries Refugia, or in other words, areas that are utilised by these species during the critical stages of their life cycles. It has also been great to learn during my discussions with the SeaDeck officials that this initiative is not being operated in isolation and is complementing other regional initiatives that are looking at how to strengthen cooperative arrangements between countries for the management of shared fish stocks. It is this spirit of cooperation that seems so strong in Southeast Asia that perhaps gives us the greatest hope that creative solutions will be found to address the present threats to short mackerel stocks. I find it amazing that despite the obvious cultural, language and religious differences that exist between the countries, that such a strong spirit of cooperation exists. <laughs>